Okay. I don't know if you saw, but it is episode 76. It took me a while before I realized the episode numbers are in the corner. That's not good. <laughs> Anyways, a couple things to talk about this week. Um, first one specifically being that Democrats passed an expanded background check for gun sales. And this other article about someone who attacked someone wearing a MAGA hat. Oh, dear God. All right, anyways, first one was for me. Um, we've actually talked, we've talked um, gun, gun control a few times, right? Definitely have. One of the early um, podcasts was about the SAFE Act, which actually has like more views than anything else, which means like two for us, but still. All right. <laughs> so there's been a couple of times we talked um, gun control and how we feel. Um, but specifically, and I told you, I tried to figure out what is exactly in the bill. I couldn't get really too far with it, which I don't like. I feel like it should be easier to do, but because this is like government stuff, so it should be public, but and I'm sure it is. I just need to find it in the right place, but, um, the basic gist of this bill is it's trying to close the private show and like private transfer loopholes for guns. So, like, I guess you can go to one of those private gun shows and just buy a gun. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if you have to show ID at least at these guns. You, you do. You do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is that all you it, need, it, you think? Uh, you know, I don't know entirely. Down, especially like down you, south. I know in New York you can't do it at all. Can you speak from experience? Have you been to some of these in New York? Or I've been to them in New York and you can't buy anything in New York. Because, yeah, there's at probably a, a state law. At a gun law. show, yeah. Yeah, well, safe act. There you go. There's a state law. And there's probably more than that, but... Okay, yeah. So this is definitely in states who um, aren't so limiting themselves about background checks. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, when I was in Texas back in 2009, mm -hmm. when I, or 2008, when I first got to Texas... Um, I had a buddy who was in the army who we went down to a pawn shop and he bought a shotgun for like 200 bucks. And what they did is they ran your license to make sure you didn't have any outstanding warrants. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Well, at least they're doing something because a lot of times. Yeah, but I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you have to remember that we were, we were out of state, but well, but we had military IDs. So I don't know. I don't know yeah, how that know. works particularly. I just remember that it was so, like 20 minutes yeah. and he had a shotgun. Fair enough. So my, my, my comment basically is like, I don't have an issue with that. I really don't have an issue. Um, I think at first thought there should be a way to make sure that any weapon being sold doesn't get into quote unquote the wrong hands. Um, but we were kind of chatting a little bit before about the real questions here are how you do it. So for a private transfer, like, how are you going to like, how are you going to regulate that? How is that you're going to make people come to you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that there's a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go to the government, you know? So I just, well, private transfer, so, that's tough because go ahead. It is, but let's talk about, um, the West Webster shooting here that happened locally for us, right in the state of New York, upstate New York. Oh, geez. You had a young lady yeah. that went to a Walmart, I believe it was, or Dick's Sporting Goods, um, purchased weapon and ammunition, and then just handed it to the guy who then shot at, you know, right. our paramedics and fire rescue a crew that mm -hmm. went to respond to a house that was burning. Um, so the idea would be is that in that private transfer, the female or the person who had given the ammunition and weapons to the person who would not be able to because of right felony charges or whatever the case may be, yeah. um, she would be able to be prosecuted as if she potentially shot the weapon herself, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. as if she were to have been there and actually kill someone. Well, you know, she did it by handing yeah. off. Right, you but typically your, those yeah. who facilitate receive lesser sentences than those that do. And they and they should. I don't have any issue with that. Well, I think Maybe. now when it comes to, you know, weapons specifically, I think they want to up the ante to where it's you know, you essentially get charged with negligent homicide. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. Right? Because you're being neg you're Thinking being negligent. And, yeah, right. You know. 
um, and negligent homicide would so be. I'll ask you. Serious offense. Does a background check in that instance stop that shooting? No, because they would have to. If you privately own it and you want to just hand it off to someone else, you would have to either go somewhere or report it somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's well, the you idea, go down right? to either your county or your sheriff's office and fine, but file the if, paperwork. If both these people are, or if if both these people are intent on doing something criminal, why the hell would they care? Like she could, even if you have those laws on the book, someone can just still be a Trojan horse to go get you. A, well, that's not a good reference, but go get you a weapon and just hand it off to you. Like, yeah, absolutely. But the idea would be is that, you know, if someone were to have been caught doing that, right? So imagine yeah, I go to Walmart, right? right, right. I right hear you. In yeah. part of the spiel, or I go to Dick's Sporting Goods or Gander Mountain or any place that you'd be able to buy a firearm. Mm -hmm. And they say, just so that you know, you know, part of the whole sales speech is that before you sign this document it's stating that you've received this weapon, you do acknowledge the fact that if you are able to turn this weapon over to anybody who, anybody other than yourself, and they, you know, they uh, use it in a criminal uh, nature, whether it's right a shooting, a murder, robbery, you mm -hmm. name it, uh, that you would be held liable for anything that occurs with this weapon, and you have to agree to that statement before signing so, off and receiving the weapon. Right. That means, and we we talked about this right before. That means to me, and and and, and I feel like nobody, I think, I, and I think I saw polling on it in one of the articles. It's like eighty to ninety percent of people when they're asked. Do you support background checks for gun sales, no matter what private or private shows, whatever? Like most people support that. So the vagueness sure. of that statement is not really where the, the debate is. The debate is we're talking about a registry. That's what we're talking about. Right. And the only way you can get that done is if you have a registry that attributes that serial to that person. Because you're right. If you don't have a registry and they can walk out the door, once they hand it off, you're not going to fucking figure out who that was. Right. That's I so, think that's the point. Yeah. For we're me, at least. and again, we haven't seen this bill. We have no idea what this bill says. Now we're correct, we're, correct. we're just speculating between the two of us what it might be and, and how it might right. work. To me, the real debate is a registry because I feel like more there are some people who respond, "Yes, I support all background checks." That might be like, "I don't support a registry," but then that doesn't make sense for supporting all background checks because then I would say to them, "Well, then how would you do a background check on a private transfer?" We're talking about a registry. That's what we're talking about, without saying it. Right. So, well, and, and there, so there when it comes to a registry, yeah. let's talk about mm -hmm. that, right? Because, mm -hmm. like you said before, that's really the biggest sticking point for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've had this conversation with a few of my friends as well. But this idea that, uh, well, the government can't keep track of me is complete and total ludicrous. Sure. I mean, you have a PO, you have a, a mail address, you have a house, you have an apartment, you have a car. Uh, all these things are documented somewhere, right? Yep. So the idea yeah. that, well, if they know that I have a gun, now they're going to be after me, is That's fear almost on the me. level of like, like total paranoia, mm -hmm. right? And if you have that yeah. level of paranoia, um, I would be interested to find out why. You know, were, did something yeah. happen to you? Did you see something that occurred? Now, a lot of people would tell me, uh, well, you know, you've never been in a foreign country where all the weapons have been taken away. You know, but nobody's uh, taken away anybody's weapons. I don't understand. Well, yeah. Oh, oh you mean after a register? Okay, I got you. Right. The yeah. idea would be is that you know, heaven forbid, fifty but years from like, now something terrible happens, and now there's a like, yeah. dictatorship. This whole idea that you never ever. Yeah, this whole idea that you could never ever ever trust the government is 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 super like it's just not helpful. Like, dude, these other countries are banana republics. We're the United States of America. I'm not saying we're perfect, but we haven't been doing a bad job, okay? We're not a banana no, but, republic. So, But yeah. it's been interesting to see the complete and total distrust of the government because it, it wasn't really that way until, like, the 60s. Maybe not. Maybe before that. But for me, like, when it came yeah. to conspiracy theories, it was like the Bay of Pigs, there's no way we landed on the moon, the CIA killed JFK, and then ever since then, it's been, oh my god, everything's a conspiracy. Yeah. You know, and I think, unfortunately, the idea of conspiracies yeah. taint, taint real conspiracies that have actually happened, right? Like Watergate, like that really happened. That wasn't just a... So, go well, ahead. What do, you th what do you think about a registry, then? What do you... I, I, I'll share. I'll, uh, I'll go first. I'll go first. For, for me, a registry oh, is ahead. appropriate with handguns and anything over... Um, 
anything outside of a of a single shot rifle or a shotgun anything above that so anything yeah. that requires a, a true magazine uh anything that requ- that can be easily yeah. concealed um yeah you know something like that i i think when it comes to hunting for example a long range rifle is Although, yes, you can kill somebody with it. There's no disputing that, obviously. I, I don't think that it would create... That's not the preferred weapon for most people right. who, uh, who commit ta- violent acts. Right. We're talking about a society that has choice of it. So a long-range, yeah, hunting rifle. You'd be an idiot if you picked that and you're trying to kill Well, a the, there was people. one guy that did it a That's... long time ago. University of Texas in Austin. Well, he, he had... Barricaded yeah, he himself up point. into a watchtower yeah. and... Right. <laughs> Right, but but he had these the skills, days, he had the vantage point. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that these so, days, yeah. most people play Call of Duty or PUBG or whatever the hell they play, and and they just assume that they can just do the same thing. And and I don't, I don't know about that. If they think that they're dumb, but well, that, I think that's the point is because <laughs> you've you've been ingrained to think that Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, has the quickest draw, and you can just do this with a, you know, you can just hold an M60 like Rambo with one hand yeah. or two hands and just. <laughs> two of them you know one in each hand like that that's not that that's a heavy fucking gun that's like 50 pounds yeah Sylvester Stallone is a weightlifter a bodybuilder he would be able to actually hold something up like that but not for a very long period of time like yeah, I don't are, know. For, for me when it comes to hunting amazing. specifically right yeah. nobody hunts with an AR-15 nope. uh, and it's illegal in I believe <laughs> all states to hunt with a pistol so you know nope, if you yep, can't correct. actually hunt with it legally uh, that I would I would be absolutely yeah. okay having in a registry. Yeah, and I think off the top of my head when I when I think about a question like that because especially when we talk about magazine weapons because they do pose such a dangerous threat potentially to society, that means there's a certain level of like hey, we need to make sure we're not I don't want to make it sound like we need to know that you have a gun, but it's like look, this thing is actually super dangerous, okay? And if it gets in the wrong hands, even if it's not in your fu- your fault that it gets in the wrong hands, like we need to be able to track these things and and figure out, you know, where they went and who got them and you know all these things because like you know, if you want the privilege of being able to go to the range and shoot your weapon, I'm okay with that. You will also, you know, to have that privilege, you need to be on a registry just so I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's how I feel. <laughs> There's probably good arguments against it, but that's just how I first feel. You know. Sure. I think I struggle with the idea of not hunting you, weapons. Sure, sure. I, I think I struggle with the idea of you saying that it's a privilege, right? In this country, a lot of people would argue with you and say it's a right. It's so it's a, okay. It's a, it's a right now. Let me hold yeah, on. Let me, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. To me, right, it comes down to uh, which rights supersede other rights. Yes, right? and does I was your say that. right to have a Perfect. weapon supersede everybody's right to have a to feel like we have a relatively safe society. safe society? Exactly. Sure, right. And some would argue, right, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, that more weapons is more safer. But, but right now, overall, you know, it seems to be that most people want to have less guns, uh, you know, readily available to harm. Right. We want Especially those ones weapons that to be hunting. in trained. Right. Well, right. specifically those ones. Yeah. Uh, we want those weapons to be, you know, handled by people who should be getting training throughout the day. And for me, that's also an sure. argument. Uh, in my opinion, for police forces to right increase the amount of training they give their uh, officers when it comes to firearms, because I don't think that they do enough um, mm-hmm. to do that. And unfortunately, you know, when it comes to police officers, you have to have so much, you have to have so much fucking training. It's it's almost mind-boggling. But um, you know, firearm safety is is extremely important, and I think right. being able to react in a situation accordingly. Uh, and you're not going to eliminate all instances, you know. Sometimes someone's going to have a misfire. Um, yes, yeah. it shouldn't happen, but it, it will. No matter what you do, it will happen. Someone will forget to put something back on safety. Someone will not realize that that magazine wasn't empty. Someone will not realize that there was already a bullet in the chamber. Um, but more of that, you know, safety practice is, is uh, look, extremely important. I'm definitely sensitive to the fact that we have a second amendment. Okay. I didn't mean to say privilege as no, I get you. As to say, but I meant, I meant I, anybody's allowed to challenge me on that. Like some gun toting hunting guy can, or girl or gal can challenge me on that and be upset about that. But my retort's going to be, listen, these things are dangerous. Okay. And that's what I mean by privilege. You, you need to pass a test. I need to trust you. I do not care if you own a weapon, if we can have a vetting process where I can trust you. The privilege is because these things are dangerous. 
Okay. There needs to be you like, there needs to be, you need to have a place to lock it up. You know, there needs to be, you know, you need to make sure that it's not going to get in the wrong hands. You're, you're a responsible citizen making sure that the only thing that comes out of this weapon is you enjoy it, which is fine. But because it's so dangerous, that's kind of what I'm, I'm maybe I'm not explaining it great, but like, that's the privilege. I mean, like you are privileged enough sure. to own something that could kill and, and cause like devastating things to happen. And so in that way, it's, it is, that's why I use that word. I would still use that word and, and it's open to debate. That's fine. I love talking to people, no doubt, but. That's that's kind of how I would explain it. Per, you know, personally, I would work on your phrasing. I think there's a better way to oh, say sure. it other than but privilege. When I explain it, when I right, when I yeah, well, that's why that's why no, I have no problem coming at me and ask me why I use a word. I'll explain it to you. So, I got a couple yeah. other things I want to ask. Yeah, um, and talk about on this article. So, um, there is a there's a paragraph in this article. Representative Doug Collins, the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee where the background check bill originated, said on Wednesday that the bill was ineffective because it foolishly presumes criminals who flout existing laws will suddenly submit themselves to background checks. Then why are you scared to have background checks if all the if all the people buying them are good? I don't understand that. I, I just uh, don't. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that? Re re redo that one. Sure, sure, sure. Representative Doug Collins, the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, where the background check bill originated, said on Wednesday that the bill was ineffective because it foolishly presumes criminals who flout existing laws will suddenly submit themselves to background checks. But we oh, literally gotcha, went through, gotcha. Yeah, we literally went through a scenario that I talked about before. It's like if you are a, a if you are a citizen who would pass the vetting process, like why are you scared of background checks? Like no, background checks there or not, bad people will definitely get those weapons. I hear that and I get that, but that has nothing to do like that just doesn't make sense to me. It just, you shouldn't be scared of background checks coming if you're doing the right things. Like, well, I think the be. idea here is, is that if you're putting a law in place that can still be circumvented by those who are, you are trying to prevent from getting the weapons, then the law is pointless in and of itself. I think that's what he's trying to say, but he said it poorly. I get that. That I get. I just, I come back to these things are dangerous. Like they, it's, you know, these things are dangerous. And well, by the way, let me just put in the context really quickly, just in case anybody does listen ever, which they won't. We're talking about, I'm, I'm right there with you. We're not talking about hunting weapons. We're right. not. We're talking sure. about those magazines. I'm right there with you. Like there, there are places where we can get nuanced and say like, this isn't as big of a threat. Like this is something for hunting. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm right there with you. So this whole conversation, the context here is definitely, we're talking about magazines and, and dangerous weapons. And that's why I keep coming back to like, man, that's, if you want to have an AR 15, like, come on, you know, so that's dangerous. Well, so, and, so here's yeah. the other question, right? If mm -hmm. I go and we've had this conversation before, if I go back to, uh, yeah. um, I forget the guy's name, Cody, something defense distributed. You remember when I sent you that? Oh yeah. 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 The 3d printing guy. Yeah. So yeah. They, they have something. Let me look it up specifically just so I can cite this correctly. I remember, dude, that was definitely a podcast we did for sure. Well, and this is something that's always going to come up for me, right? Because the yeah. point that defense distributed make and the point that um, that occurs is, uh, so this, let's see, Wiki, uh, Ghost Gunner. Yeah. So at one point they had this device that was, that was, they got away from 3D printing specifically. And what they did is they created uh, the Ghost Gunner. The mm -hmm. Ghost Gunner is a general purpose CNC mill built upon uh, open source, uh, all sorts of stuff, but you can buy it. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is this device, the only thing that it does is it is it does the rest of the CNC milling for 80% receivers. So I know, Cyril, you've worked with uh, M16s, M4s, so you have yeah. your lower and your upper? Yep. So you can right now, you can buy 80% done lowers. Okay. And that's the part that's serialized. That's the part that has the serial number on it. Okay. That's the part that the ATF tracks because that has the trigger assembly. It has all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the only part of the weapon that has the serial number. Now, what if I told you right now you could go online and buy an 80% lower for X amount of dollars, and then you would have this Ghost Gunner 2 in your basement, and all you had to do is take that 80%, place it in the CNC mill, hit start, and in about four hours you'll have a fully completed, unserialized lower. Right. That's happening right now. 
I do not need background yeah. check for any of that right now. Yeah. Because so, right now it's just you. a piece of metal. It's an 80% yeah. done piece of metal. So I, I hear can you. tell that to anybody. Right. So yeah, these, these, how, what do you do, do with that? I worry about not just, and I'm going to go not on a tangent, but a quick, sure, go ahead. I worry about, man, I worry about our responsiveness to the rapid amount of change we see in society. Jesus Christ. Like I worry about our sluggish old ass government keeping up. Like you're right. Like these, that's a complicated issue. And I don't even know, like I couldn't even tell you where I'd begin that one. I have to think about for a while. Cause now we're talking about what are we going to do? Like control people buying 3d printers and stuff like, dude, I don't know. man. Well, so this isn't a 3d printer. <laughs> this is a CNC oh, well, machine. Fine. Wh whatever, it's, it's whatever way, but... Fair enough. Whatever way it gets done, then how do you control that? You mm -hmm. you control people from buying that? Like, dude, I don't, I don't know, yo. That's the more the more well, we're able to use I've technology seen... to just you know build things from raw materials. Like, oh dear God, help us all. There, Go ahead. <clears throat> there's people I've seen online who have are smart enough, and and actually, if you just do some research, it, it shouldn't take you entirely mm -hmm. too long to build your own version of a CNC machine because a lot of that stuff is open source. Yeah, um, you could do this without having to buy the equipment from, you know, right. a defense distributed. It, it'll take time and real effort. And I think the only thing stopping people from doing using these to commit crimes is because most of the people doing this kind of stuff, like ninety nine point nine percent, because I don't think I've ever heard of anyone committing a crime with an unserialized weapon just yet. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean it hasn't happened. I'm sure it has, but I haven't heard of it yet is these are people who are weapons enthusiasts they they enjoy the process of gunsmithing they enjoy the process of right creating the Nothing weapon wrong with and that. firing the weapon and, and this is their hobby this is their life this is their Nothing passion wrong with that. so no doubt and right? how can the we get idea to a that it's already where, out there right how do we get to a place where we can let responsible people like that still enjoy themselves but you know do our best to protect society complicated questions when you throw in the fact that you can just make that unserialized stuff and you know We'll see. We shall see. I had one more thing. Yeah. And it was more just uh, a little Trump bashing because you know how I do. <laughs> um, so in the article, it's uh, two paragraphs. It says, Trump has previously indicated he supported efforts to extend background checks to all gun sales. Quote, I will be strong. I think it's just a tweet. I will be strongly pushing comprehensive background checks with an emphasis on mental health. Raise age to 21 and end sale of bump stocks. Congress is in a mood to finally do something on this issue. I hope Trump tweeted a year ago. So it was a tweet after a shooting after the shooting at the uh, Parkland high school. So this boy indicated he, 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 and this is what you love about politics. You know what I'm saying? This boy indicated that he would do something. He's willing to do something, willing to sign something. And then he comes out of course and says, I'll veto this bill. <laughs> so, it's just funny to me that like I read that as and, and by the way, you don't have to read that and say he just would agree with this bill. The Democrats wrote because once again, we haven't read it. I don't really know too much about it. I'm not here to say Trump because he tweeted that should support this bill. But it's just funny that like he does tweet something general like that and you get something that's not, you know, something that's like this. So then, oh, gosh, good old Trump. Good old so you had one more Trump. article here. New yes. Jersey. OK. We're done with the Trump bashing, no problem. Okay, uh. <laughs> I, I, you know, to me right now, if I'm being honest, no um, uh, you know, I know you're I you're into the Trump bashing right now. I'm more looking forward to the 2020 okay. election. I'm more looking forward to true, For sure. honest, like solutions Listen, to problems. No um, doubt. And I, dude, I'm all, come on. Let's not. I know. Let's not I throw know. me under the bus too much. I am way more about that stuff. Oh no way! Uh, so. No no no. Any opportunity I get to throw you under the bus, it's happening. Oh, and I accept, no doubt, and you're not <laughs> wrong. But sometimes I see the low hanging fruit. Most of the time, it's forbidden <laughs> fruit, and I resist it. But sometimes I'm just like, oh, that's hanging sometimes so low. You know, sometimes you do what you gotta do. I get <laughs> so it. Low. Okay. Anyways, so um, basically, this other article: this kid in New Jersey. Um, sees a 19 year old kid in New Jersey sees an 81 year old man wearing a MAGA hat walking outside the grocery store this kid apparently just gets triggered by the hat for I guess and just you know starts yelling at him and you know the dude's trying to walk away and he's like dude I don't care whatever be upset it doesn't bother me and then the kid was trying started to try to grab the hat was able to grab the hat prompting a struggle pushed over the old man 
sustained minor injuries, you know. So basically, you know, this guy, this kid assaulted a guy because he was upset that he was wearing a MAGA hat. And I think, like, all three of us, all three of the bros in this podcast would condemn this kid. What an idiot. Don't do shit like this. Okay, that's not really a discussion. I kind of wanted to pose a question to you. Um, sure. Like, what, what do you, why do you think people, why do you think people do shit like this? Like, does this kid actually think he's, like, doing anything good? Promoting anything, like, promoting a healthy society at all? Like, doing, does he think he's, like, making a difference? Because if he is, I don't. I just don't get it. I don't know why people sit here and think this stuff. Because to me, at least me as a person, I always, like, I'm always thinking about consequences to actions. I'm constantly thinking about consequences to actions. I'm, consequ I'm constantly evaluating. I'm constantly thinking about the right way to word things. You know, and it just feels like some people don't give a shit. And they 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 don't think about consequences. See Jussie Smollett, okay? They just they just go off and they just do whatever the hell. And I just really am curious as to why people do this. I don't get it. Uh, I think they do this because they see an opportunity to be unimpeded and do something that they normally wouldn't be able to do. You know, right now, right to a lot of people, um, this is an appropriate excuse to do something that other otherwise would be condemned. What, right? lightly assaulting an elderly person? Why is that well, okay? Faking a hate crime? Why is that okay? Oh my god, it's, it's not. not. In, 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 in any <laughs> world, it's not. But because okay. of what's happening currently, people feel like they can get away with more and, and will try to use that to their advantage. Yeah. That's just, that's how it is right now, bro. Unfortunately. No, no. I just, it's, I just, whenever I read sickening. articles like this, I think more about the, the, the philosophy behind like what makes a human being make and listen emotions are a, a motherfucker okay so emotions themselves can just get people all riled up um but still man like you're gonna put yourself in a position where you let your emotions dictate so much you make poor decisions that's dumb what are you doing uh it happens all the time on but I, you know, I, I, I get it and i've I done it to... too by the way. I'm, not perfect. I'm not trying to sit here and sniff my farts okay i'm not perfect i just sometimes there's levels to this we can admit there's levels and this is a level that just seems ridiculous to me go ahead no 100 yeah. Um, and, and what I meant to do was just say, you know, I'm not trying to bash liberals here. It's not just right. It's mm -hmm. not just liberals. People feel like they can do certain things when uh, no doubt. certain people are in office. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I, sure. I feel like it's not always good. You yeah, ever seen those? You, you ever seen those videos? And it happened a few times. Those videos were like someone was at a political rally and they got so incensed that they were like swinging at people. I'm like, Jesus oh, yeah. Christ! Like, there's a what world. You know me. I like Vice. Vice is my uh, metric for younger Vice, people. What's going on as far as news is concerned? Like, what? Vice is Vice is sixty percent good shit. Go ahead. It, it, there's a lot of good shit. There's one uh, Vice profile about a dude who called himself like uh, like the right wing Spartan. Oh, nice. <laughs> and he legit would go to rallies just to fight people. He's Come like, on. You know, he was what a Trump supporter. Like, he, he started showing up in a shield and a mask and just the whole nine yards. And he's See, like, another... people, people fucking love this shit. Yeah, they just want, they yeah. want a villain. And, and that's, like, how he portrayed himself. He's like, this, this is what the people want, so this is what I give them. And when I show up, all they want to do is fight me, so I fight them. Just another example been, of some. He was like during the during the election for 2016, he was like stabbed twice, uh, maced a whole bunch of times, tased a shitload of times, all just from going to like rallies, like Trump rallies. Jesus Christ! You know, because there was you know people who were anti-protesters. You know, yeah. He had Antifa. He had all you know all sorts of different uh, places, and, and it's not specifically to bash just those people i mean look at look no, at the stuff not. where speech was shut down at like uh, berkeley you know riots because of yeah. who? uh milo yiannopoulos ben shapiro milo i'm like and me and chad had this conversation earlier milo i'm like you know what milo said some weird stuff people get upset with milo whatever do you ben shapiro like i don't sometimes i'm people get like like what like what are you so upset about ben shapiro for 
Like, I don't agree with him as ideals. No doubt. No doubt. Like, we disagree on a lot of things. Sure. But, like, I could still sit down and talk to him and, like... Well, he is, we somebody agree, that, just, he, he is somebody that, oh, although man. very stoutly religious and will argue specifically to, you know, more of a right-wing agenda, um, it's also somebody that's not going to fight you. He's not going to... That's what like, I'm saying. Wh- what, is, what is that? And the fear, I think, is, is this idea that allowing people like this to speak threatens you know society as a whole and, and what i would say is to those what? people well what i would say to those people is well you need to get out of out of what you think is society because there's a whole other right. fucking america right that thinks differently than you so this you're idea that right you're literally judging everyone else like take it easy <laughs> oh man what are you gonna do just i just it's just it's, it's just funny that Ben Shapiro, really? Also, there's a lot of these people, and rightly so. Maybe not rightly so. It kind of stains their character and integrity to me. But there's a lot of people that have figured out, hey, I can make money by just being controversial and having leftists like shoot me to fame. Like, How about if you don't like Ben Shapiro and he's coming to your campus, just don't go. And maybe he only talks to like six people in the crowd and nobody cares. Okay, instead you're just like throwing, you know, not, I'm not going to... I'm sure it's not been like super bad, but you know, there's definitely been some reports of like some van light vandalism and like, it's like, what now yeah. you just elevated his profile by just like acting like just beneath you somewhere beneath, not beneath you, but somewhere beneath where we all need to be when you could have just left it alone, man. Yeah. I, it's just, it's... all right. The idea of, and I, unfortunately what it makes people look like is it makes it look, look like you can't have a discussion with people. Right. It makes it look like you can't have a nuanced opinion. It makes it look like you're completely closed-minded to any other options that, that occur outside of what you think should happen. Yeah. Um, which most people, even for those college kids, I don't it's think that weak. that's true. I think they just caught up into the, they just get caught up into this idea of I need to protect what I believe in specifically. And the fact of the matter is, is and and talk to anybody over the age of twenty five, you're gonna change your ideas. It's gonna happen. Oh my goodness! You might flip. You might even flip flop uh, back and forth a couple uh, times, right? If yeah. you're somebody who continuously challenges their beliefs, someone who continu- continuously reads and absorbs more information regardless of the source, just to suss out what you truly believe. Fuck, I mean, ask me right now if I think there's a God. I I don't know. I have flip-flopped I, on that I like, a few times, you know? Oh, no ask doubt, me, me what I think about abortion. Ask me what I think about drugs. I mean, I all like, of these um, things I flip-flopped on. I like what you said before we started about, um, you know, you should really put yourself... And this doesn't have to be negative. You should put yourself in a place where you're nothing. Your identity is nothing. And, you know, you're 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 building, learning new things every day. Like you, you, you shouldn't be in this place where you're, you have a part of your identity that is such that you feel like straight up attacked, even when what's happening isn't actual violence, just words. Yeah. Like you shouldn't attribute your identity so much to something that something that's nonviolent triggers you so much. Like why are you doing that? Well, like it also makes people like you want to live an unhappy existence. Like you have fun with that. I'm good. Right. <laughs> Well, that that particular problem that I was talking about before we started this is also a problem that goes into like th- that's the flaw of science right now, right? Um, there's a lot of people who might develop a thesis or a hypothesis, and they're so attached to finding out that their thesis oh, sure. is in fact true that they will dig through, they will manipulate data, they will paint data in such a way that it looks like something that it's just not. It just yeah. isn't. And, and a lot of that isn't because they're assholes. It's not because they're trying to ignore something. It's because it, they're tied to this belief now. Their reputation, their life, their name is now tied to this thesis or this. I'll, for example, I'll use the um, climate change folks. Mm-hmm. I firmly believe that a lot of these climate change people, when it first all you know started, that were on the side of the climate's not really changing because of, of, of humans... I believe that initially they're like, well, fuck, I said this. I better, I better stick to it because if I don't, maybe some of them, yeah. What, what are people gonna think? Well, what about the next thesis I have? Are they just gonna be like, that's the same guy that fucking said this? Yeah. And back on it. So, you the, know, and yeah. that's the problem. What makes me comfortable, right off the top of my head, after you said all that, what makes me kind of comfortable is the physics of our existence, our reality, 
it isn't going to change. Like if it's scientifically proven, that means it can be repeated over and over again. So right. hopefully, hopefully we can get to a point where, you know, we're really leaning on things that, um, are scientifically proven at some point, which e even if you don't like the term scientifically proven, we need to get to a point where, you know, facts are things that like can be shown in the data and the science and just can be repeated. None of this like pseudo stuff. We're not there yet, you know? So, and, and hopefully we don't burn it all to the ground before we get there. So I mean, we might, so. Well, who cares if we might, there you go. That's where we end it. Positive <laughs> thoughts always. <laughs> Just remember, before you leave this, uh, whether you like it or not, you are nothing, and you need to work to be something. Don't tie anything to your identity. Mm. Just don't. You know do how it. we? You know how we get listeners by saying stuff like that. It's gonna turn people on. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh for sure. I said. I said something to. Um, I think I've said this to you before too. I've said something to Chad today, and probably many times. Boy, none of us are going to be politicians because we're too honest. It's not going to happen because we're too honest. Like, hmm. it's just not going to, like, we're going to say things that are straight up the truth, but it makes people feel uncomfortable. And they're gonna be like, ah, nah, I don't like them. <laughs> Whether it be you need to be more responsible or you're not doing enough or some of you stink. Like, it's. <laughs> All right, anyways.